forecast first, sponsored by Natax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Well, good evening to you on what has turned into a very cool night across central Illinois with the clear skies that we've got. If you've been out at all this evening, you know what I'm talking about. Nice chill to the air with temperatures that are now down into the lower 50s. 52 in Champaign and in Springfield. 54 for the warm spot in Effingham. Take a look at this. Out the door in the morning. We're talking about the 40s to start the day. How about 40 degrees early on? With lots of sunshine, though. All right. Is it going to stay this way for a while? Or are we going to head back to the warmer temperatures? We'll show you coming up. WCI3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA3 News. Memorial Stadium is usually home to Illini football. Why it was also a place tonight for a little bit of normalcy during the pandemic. Crowded lines outside of bars have some worried. What people are proposing as a way to fix it. Early voting starts next week and officials say you shouldn't wait until the last minute. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. Chancellor Jones really wanted to find ways for students to get together and to have something fun to do. After weeks of keeping students away from each other, the U of I is bringing back some in-person events. Good evening, I'm Jessica Coons. The university is showing two movies tonight at Memorial Stadium. It's the first event in a series of socially distanced gatherings. WCI3's Andy Olson is live in the newsroom tonight. So Andy, why did the U of I think this was time to start events again? Jessica, the university says so many students have been following the protocol they've put in place and are staying safe. They wanted to reward them with something that let them get out of their dorm rooms. It needed to be safe, and there's no better place to social distance than Memorial Stadium. Black Panther and Hidden Figures were being shown on Memorial Stadium scoreboards, but the real show Friday night was seeing thousands of students together for the first time this semester. It's a good way for people to, you know, uh, get out of their dorms, come here, socialize a little bit, and hopefully in like a safe way, and, um, you know, just have a good time without kind of risking shutting down or going back into like quarantine for two weeks. Only students were allowed at the twin billing. Each one had to have their student ID and their Safer Illinois app that shows they've been granted building access. Students there are required to maintain social distancing at all times and also wear a mask. The Student Affairs Office wanted an environment of being together while still staying apart. You can put people in certain sections and, and allow them to separate in their small groups of friends, uh, but still be with other people and have a shared experience, and that was really the goal. Yeah. State guidelines let the stadium be filled with up to 12,000 people, but the max capacity for movie night was set at just under 4,000. Groups were spaced out, and the effort given by the university to give students something to do was not lost on them. So the fact that they are trying to give us a little bit of normalcy in a time where it's so much restriction, it's like, it's more motivation to like show how much that we as students appreciate the school because of how much they're trying to reach out to us in such a weird time. The movie showings were only announced on Wednesday, so they're not expecting a huge crowd. As the semester goes on, the school says they're still committed to finding ways the campus can come together like tonight and still be safe. Live in the newsroom, Andy Olson, WCIA3, your local news leader. All right, Andy, thank you. The events will continue after this weekend. Starting next week, Memorial Stadium will have Thursday movie nights through the end of October. Fridays will be variety acts, and Saturdays will be concerts. Over in Hoopston, the Little Lorraine has released its movie schedule through the end of November. Showings are Friday and Saturday nights at 7, and Sundays at 3 o'clock. Now, while some gatherings are happening at U of I, there could be some rule changes on the way for U of I campus town bars. A crowd at Joe's Brewery last night concerned public health leaders. Compliance officers went there and asked people to leave, but they're afraid the same thing will happen again. So they want to make a rule that only lets people 21 and over inside. Right now that rule is in place after 9 p.m. Students we talked with feel the change would help. There's always students visiting um, from like other schools or other cities because they can enter bars under 21 here. Um, so we believe that that could also be a big factor in kind of increasing cases because those people are not getting tested twice a week as we are. 
Joe's responded saying they don't think this rule will solve the problem because the virus doesn't care what the drinking age is. They added that house parties are the major problem with spreading the virus and not bars. A U of I student was cited for endangering the public after a party last night. This happened at the Delta Tau Delta Fraternity House on East John. Members there held a large party that violated a COVID-19 ordinance. 20-year-old Thomas McDonough was cited issued a city notice to appear in court. One school district has decided to stay remote for now. Decatur Public Schools announced remote learning will continue through the first half of the second quarter. That's November 13th. They'll decide on a later date for the rest of the second quarter. The Champaign School District is still exploring options for the second quarter. Today was the deadline for families to complete a preferred learning survey. Students are learning remotely through the first quarter, quarter which ends October 16th. The district will use the surveys as they consider options moving forward. A second employee at Danville City Hall tested positive for COVID-19 this week. Several others are waiting for test results. That building will stay closed through at least September 25th. Dewitt County is now on the state's COVID-19 warning list. It's being flagged after its incident rate and positivity rate grew. This is the first time Dewitt County has been on the warning list. The Illinois Department of Public Health has been keeping tabs on each county's statistics, and it uses the warning list to ident identify ones that show negative trends. One man in Clinton says not everyone is on the same page. I think there's basically three groups of people. There are the people who try to minimize this and downplay this. There are the people who, in group two, who advocate, you know, for more restrictions and stuff. Uh, and then there are the people like me in group three who take this seriously, but also think that we can do things and uh, open things up in a safe and responsible manner. The health department administrator says the spike in cases may be related to gatherings on Labor Day weekend. Statewide, there are more than 2,100 new cases. That brings the total to more than 270,000. 20 more people have died. There have now been more than 8,400 COVID-related deaths across the state. We have a follow-up from last night. The Champaign County coroner did an autopsy today on a body found in Rantoul. Police say DNA results are not immediately available, but officers suspect it could be David Franklin. He disappeared last month. Those remains were found near where they found his bike. This is an update. Champaign police have made an arrest in a shooting from earlier this month. It happened September 7th on Kenwood Road. A 27-year-old man was shot twice and taken to the hospital. 20-year-old Keaton Lavelle Bryant of Champaign was arrested today. Police say this is still an active investigation. And a man on trial for murder won't be back in the courtroom until next month. Christopher Glass is charged in the shooting death of Kimberly Mattingly. Authorities found her body on private property in April after her parents reported her missing. Glass's jury trial was set for this month, but officials say his lawyer asked to push it back because of the amount of discovery that's involved in this case. Illinois House Republicans believe they can look into Speaker Michael Madigan's dealings with ComEd as part of their investigation. The U.S. Attorney's Office essentially gave the House permission to move forward with that investigation. State House Democrats were initially concerned this could interfere with the federal investigation. The U.S. Attorney says the House can continue as long as they don't directly interfere with it. Um, they had some very procedural objections, but they, they clarified quite a bit that we can call witnesses, we can request documents, and we can ask meaningful questions from witnesses. Uh, that we needed to seek guidance from the U.S. Attorney's Office to find out what our parameters were. We have that guidance. It's provided in writing. We now know what our parameters are, and it's now time to get to work. The committee chairman officially called on the speaker and former ComEd lobbyists. None of them are required by law to testify in front of that committee. From your local election headquarters, early voting starts in less than a week. September 24th is the first day for early voting. October 29th is the last day you can request a vote by mail ballot. And election day is November 3rd. Vote by mail ballots have to be postmarked by that date. If we receive your request on October 29th, we have two days in order to send it out. We're going to try and send it out as soon as we get it. Um, but that's just not really enough time for you to ensure that you get your vote by mail ballot and to get it back and postmarked by Election Day.
You heard there, they don't want you to wait until the last minute. County clerk offices will have two weeks to count ballots after they get them. Several Champaign County buildings will be closed on Election Day. Those include the Champaign County Courthouse, Brookings Administrative Building, plus some other county offices. The county clerk's office will be open and operating for election activities. And voter terminals will be in the Urbana Park District Brookings Gym with parking off of Learman Avenue. People will be rallying at the state capitol tomorrow. What they say they should be allowed to do. Plus, it's something one community has needed, and it's opening soon. And the Big Ten football schedule will be a grind for teams, which could cause concern off the field.